Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. Going to do a quick little tutorial on installing new carpet. And this time around we wanted to clean up our interior a little bit. And the biggest step in doing that was replacing our really grungy, stained carpet that we've had for probably the last 10 years. So we're going to show you some of the steps, some of the tricks. We're not exactly a factory correct installation because as you can see we got ourselves a roll cage and we have a uh, center shifter and we've got some modifications here so it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one factory style installation but we are going to show you a few things that are really good suggestions when it comes to laying down carpet and really kind of getting what we think is the best result out of your carpet installation our kit came to us from Auto Custom Carpets, or ACC, to most of us, through our friends at Year One. While we had gone a darker shade previously, the factory color for our charger was medium saddle, which we went with here. Since most all carpet kits arrive in a pretty tidy box, it's smart to let it lay out in the sun for several hours. Doing so is going to relax a lot of those heavy creases and wrinkles that show up from being crammed in a box for several weeks or months. Unfortunately, the standard juke backing needed to be heavily realigned, so we peeled back most of it and laid down some heavy coats of spray adhesive on both sides before laying the juke down flat, this time with no wrinkles. We also trimmed off the excess where it poked out. With the bucket seats removed and the rear bench out of the way, we began laying down the rear carpet. These carpets come in a two-piece kit, the rear coming up and under the back bench and halfway between the bottom of the front seats. The carpet is molded to the contours of the transmission tunnel and the rear footwells, so laying it flat should be pretty effortless. Because of the roll cage, we needed to carefully measure around the down bars and trim the juke away before cutting a careful window where we could wrap around the bars as best as possible. While the outside edges of the carpet will be tucked underneath the rear seat, side panels, and door sill trim, ACC does leave a little bit of extra material, so you're going to want to pick up a good pair of crafting or sewing scissors. Don't use your wife's good kitchen scissors. Trust us, it's worth it to buy a new pair for the job. The front carpet runs a little ways up the firewall and overlaps over the front of the rear section. The front has a few more obstacles to contend with like the accelerator pedal, forward down bars of the cage, high beam switch, and the pedestal mount for our TCI shifter, so we made sure to take our time and measure two or three times before making a final cut. I'm not going to lie, but all this time working around the roll cage really made me begin to resent it. I haven't taken the charger down the track in forever, and for some stinking reason I'm still climbing in and out of it like I was Ronnie Socks. Don't get me wrong, I like it, the car needs it, especially with the engine we're going to build, but man it's a pain in the butt. Okay, okay, back to the carpet. Unlike the factory who let the standard loop carpet simply rest in the car, we sprayed a little bit of 3M adhesive around the transmission tunnel and footwells where we didn't want the carpet shifting. We've been in beautifully restored cars with loose carpet, and it just feels kind of weird. With the carpet finally trimmed, we could reinstall the shifter and bucket seats. Cutting holes is a bit of a chore, and there's ways of doing both big and little holes that will ensure the least amount of fraying. Larger holes, like for our shifter and the high beam switch, were made by pinching the carpet and nipping a small X-shaped cut and working it into a circle, taking out small rings of material until the hole fit our desired size. For the studs holding down the bucket seats, we used a soldering iron to heat up and burn a hole up through the holes in the floorboards. This way the plastic undercoating of the carpet literally melts a plastic ring around the edge of the hole, keeping it from fraying. And with that, the rest of your interior can go back in. You may have noticed the sound insulation we had covering the floorboards. We got that from Classic Industries a few years ago. It's great for mitigating heat, vibration, and exhaust drone, and if you plan on driving your Classic Mopar anywhere, we strongly recommend it. As one final step, we splurged and picked up a set of color match embroidered floor mats from year one. We really think the embroidered emblems look great, and frankly, we're a little embarrassed to be so excited about floor mats. Jeez, we're getting old. Anyhow, the whole process shouldn't take you longer than a day. And really, for a couple hundred bucks, can radically change how the inside of your car feels. So if you're on the fence, go over to year one's website and check out the carpet offerings from ACC. You'll be glad you did. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching Mopar Connection. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please visit us over at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com 
where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription-free to you.